Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline and I create knitting content here on YouTube. So in today's video I thought it might be fun to go through my knitting needle collection. So I've been knitting for quite a few years now so I've kind of gathered a lot of different types of knitting needles just as I was trying different brands along the way. And I feel like now I finally grasped like a good concept of what I look for in a knitting needle. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and just a little bit about my thoughts on each of the different brands that I've used along the way. So just a little bit of an overview. I do knit, I don't crochet, so you'll only see a couple of crochet hooks in this collection. Um, and also I prefer to knit Magic Loop rather than with double pointed needles. So you'll see my selection of double pointed needles is fairly small as well. So basically I'm just going to take you through each category of knitting needles, the different brands that I own, and what I think of each brand. So I hope you enjoy this video. So I'm going to hold the camera for this one so hopefully it doesn't shake too much. But I'm just going to start over here in my miscellaneous category. So here I have a cable needle and then quite a few tapestry needles. Um, I feel like I used to have plastic tapestry needles but I guess they've just gotten lost along the way. I do tend to lose these very often. Um, but it comes in handy that I do review a lot of knitting kits because then in every one of those kits they usually give you two tapestry needles. Then I do have a cable needle. I only own one cable needle and I believe I got this at Joann's one time, or maybe AC Moore. Um, it does work pretty well. I typically use this if it's finer yarn and I'm more afraid of a double pointed needle sliding out. But if I don't, if it's a small cable, I actually won't use a cable needle. Um, there's just something called cabling without a cable needle. And then if it is like bulkier yarn, I'll actually use a double pointed needle instead because I find that helps with speed. Um, just because in here you basically have to get it into and out of this groove, which is of course the point of these. Um, but I've found that I can go faster if I use a double pointed needle. Now moving over here to my double pointed needles. This is my collection here. And in this first bucket, I never separate these out really because essentially all I use them for is casting on or off two at a time socks. Um, so with top down socks, you have to of course cast on one of your socks to double pointed needles and then slide them onto the needle. That's essentially what I use those for. I did buy these off eBay when I first started. Um, they're all right. Some of them are curved, so I wouldn't recommend that as a source for getting your knitting needles, but they do work for the purposes of casting on and off two at a time socks. Now over here, um, these are chow boos, and these I actually just use for, these three sets over here I just use for hat tutorials that I have on my channel. Because typically for brims of hats and places where I have to knit smaller diameters, I'll actually just use Magic Loop instead of double pointed needles. So I actually only own three sets here. So these are Chow Goos. These ones are probably, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the brand, but it's, I think it's B-O-Y-E. And you can get that from AC Moore, Joann's, Michael's, one of those types of stores. And they're just aluminum. And then finally, these ones over here, this is my favorite brand of knitting needles that I'll talk more about later, but these, these ones over here are leaky. Um, so essentially they are driftwood on both sides and they're also just like a really pretty knitting needle. And I don't have any trouble with the middle in here. Sometimes in other needle, knitting needles, you'll get a groove, but I found that those ones work really, really well. So next up, I have my crochet hooks <laughs> and you'll see these are the only ones I have. So these ones over here, these ones are again from a Joann's or a Michael's. And then this one I did buy from my local knitting store. And I did try and look up the brand on this one, but unfortunately I couldn't find it. Um, but it is a nice knitting needle. They do sell a lot of um, Knitter's Pride, so I would guess it's a Knitter's Pride one. Um, would be my best guess. But I do really like the handle on this. Again, I'm not really a crocheter, so I'm probably not the best person to um, review these, but I have used these different types of uh, knitting needles for doing steaking and things like that. It's essentially just what I have those for, or for doing, um, I think I want to call it an I-cord, but essentially what I use my crochet hooks for. Now over here, you'll see my one mm -hmm. fixed circular. I actually do have another one of these exactly the same because these are my favorite sock needles. Um, and the reason I have fixed circulars for my sock needles um, is just because you can't actually get interchangeable ones this small. So I knit my socks on US Zero knitting needles. I did initially use metal needles. I don't actually have those anymore because I've converted over to these ones. But these needles are leaky size zero 
I believe this is a 24 inch cord and yeah, I love them. The downside to them is that you do break them. So I've broken two pairs. Um, on one pair, I snapped it further down. On the other pair, it just started to splinter up towards the top. So actually what I ended up doing was to finish that pair of socks. I just actually took a nail file <laughs> and I sanded down the top of my knitting needle. It actually worked pretty well. Um, but after that, I decided I should probably just get another pair. So I have this one and then one that I'll show you later on, which currently has a pair of socks on it. I don't own many fixed needles anymore, but this is my one set. So these ones, these are that same brand I was talking about before. If we get this to focus, it's B-O-Y-E, size eight. So these ones are aluminum again, and this is a brand that you can get at your local craft store. For my different cords, I find that I'm always losing cords. So none of these I think are actually ones that originally came in the set. I have two of the 16 inch cords. So these are good for hats. And then this looks like about a 24 inch cord right here. And now these are my most used knitting needles over here. This is my interchangeable sets. So this set right here is basically like the first big purchase into knitting I ever made. Or actually I got it as a gift, so technically I didn't make it. Uh, but my parents gave it to me one year for Christmas. And this is the Knitter's Pride Carbons. So I think I actually still have the sheet in here. Oh, I just found more tapestry needles. Um, so yes, this is what it looks like. Knitter's Pride Carbons. And it came with nine needle tips, four cords, and then the little caps and everything that they usually come with. So essentially what they are is they're carbon fiber in the middle and then they're just metal on the ends. And you'll notice that inside my set, I do not have nine pairs anymore. And that's for a couple of reasons. First is that I just, I lose them every once in a while. And then the second thing with this set is that they break. Um, so I would, Based on my personal experience, I would not recommend this set. Um, so I can show you one that's broken. And this one actually broke probably a month ago, but I haven't gotten around to fixing yet. And the way I fix them is I super glue them. But so basically, since you do have the carbon fiber in the middle and then the metal on both sides, there's the potential for either the top to fall off or the bottom to fall off. So in this one, the bottom comes off. So essentially to fix that, I just have to super glue it back on. But then you basically just end up with a ridge in there or you end up with too much glue and then it's a whole different issue. But I feel like when you spend that much money on knitting needles, you shouldn't have to worry about them falling apart, especially um, like that way. I don't know, maybe that's, maybe it's just me and I try and tighten them too tight or something. But this is definitely not the first one that it's happened to. It's probably actually about the third or fourth one. So yes, these are not my favorite knitting needles. That's the first thing about them. The second downside to them, so let me pick out a couple that this happened on. And I sent them an email a while back asking if you could get replacements, but I never heard back. This is a good example. And then this one's a good example. Um, but if you look at the tips of them, you can see how it's not flat right there. So see how there's a dip down and then the metal comes up. So that's one of them. This one's another one. This one's actually probably one of the most extreme. You can see that there's like, I can get my nail caught there. So that's really frustrating when you're knitting because the yarn gets caught there. So I wouldn't recommend getting knitting needles where it's basically like a different surface at the top than it is for the regular needle. Um, so yes, I do still have these knitting needles just because it's such a big cost to buy a new set of interchangeables. So I just basically figure that I'll slowly start replacing these with my new favorite sets um, as these ones kind of start breaking or I just get too frustrated with the little tapering of them. So those are the Knitter's Pride Carbons. Then over here I have, these are additions to that set. So these are ones I've even either bought because I didn't have the ones in the set anymore or because they were sizes that weren't originally in my set. So over here, these ones are the same size height-wise as the other ones. Um, so these are leaky five inch 
um, interchangeable needles. So basically, they're the same things. The leaky needles just actually come in two different heights. So there's the five inch and then there's the three and a half inch. And I really like these needles. These are my new favorite knitting needles. I just think they're really clean, really smooth. Um, and the joins on all of them are really good. I've never had a problem with them. I have broken my thinner ones that are the circular needles that I was talking about before for socks. But I mean, if you buy a wooden needle that's a size zero, I feel like that's just expected. So that's more user error um, from sitting on it and things like that. And then down here, these little three and a half ones, these ones are great if you're knitting a hat and you wanna do, so I actually found these out once I bought these, but if you have a 16 inch cord, it's actually a lot easier to knit a hat if you use these little tiny knitting needles than if you use the full size ones. Because on a full size one, it's pretty hard to actually turn the needles inwards and knit on one to the other because there isn't much give in this cord. But if you use the tinier knitting needles, it makes it a lot easier. And then lastly, I do have one other type of knitting needle here. And this is what I bought at my local yarn store before they um, got the leaky needles. So this one is a Knitter's Pride, I wanna say it's a Dreams, because that's the brand they sell there. And I do like this knitting needle. I think it's really good. It's very comparable to the Leaky. Um, just, I feel like the uh, only difference is usually they all to come in different colors. Um, yeah, I have never had an issue with this. I just kind of realized that I liked my sock needle so much and those ones were Leaky. I also think I just kind of like the look of the driftwood and all these needles. Um, but yes, I've never had a problem with these knitting needles. I do enjoy knitting with them. And then lastly, I do have a few more knitting needles that are just on projects. So this sock right here I'm currently working on, it has my other set of my, uh, this looks like about a 36 inch cord for Magic Loop socks. And sometimes I do knit on smaller cords than other people would usually recommend for socks and things like that. And that's just because I've kind of found what works for me for Magic Loop. Um, but again, it would definitely depend on the person. Here's another cable pattern I was playing around with. So this one has some of my Knitter's Pride carbons on it. And then lastly, I also have this little swatch that I was working on. And this one also has the Knitter's Pride carbons on it. So there's two more of my cords I've now located. So apparently I have five cords at least, so that's exciting. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of view of all my knitting needles. And if you have any questions about these different brands that I've talked about, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Um, I'll try and link just kind of like the general websites to each of these different brands down below too. If you're curious to look into just like what the different price points and things like that are, because a lot of these knitting needles I actually bought like a long time ago. Like this set is from maybe three years ago. So I imagine my price estimate of this set probably isn't accurate anymore. And also I've noticed a lot of different yarn stores actually charge different prices for the leakies. Um, so for example, I bought my one sock needle at one yarn shop and then I bought the other one at a different yarn shop. And one time it was like 15, the other time it was 12. Not sure what's going on there. But yeah, I'll just try and link to all those websites down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos and I'll see you next time.